In this tutorial, for new Blender users, we'll take a look at the graph editor and see how you can use it to control your animations. It's a really powerful tool. So I have a basic object in the scene here, and one of the things we're going to start doing then is we'll uh, get in the habit of naming everything as we go. It's, a, it's really important. I haven't done it so far for the most part, but uh, now that you're up to speed a little bit more with Blender, you can... Uh, kind of add some little details to the scene. So I had pressed N here to get this menu up and down here this was a cube. I just modified it a little bit and I extruded it up here. But the name of the object is cube so I'm just gonna call it you know purple object. Whatever it is. Alright like that. So I've just given it a name and it shows up right here as well. And this helps distinguish it from other things because up here you'll notice it, you have your list of items in the scene and there's the purple object right here. You can select things up here as well just by clicking here and clicking here and sometimes it's easier to find your object in here than it is to try and find it within the scene if you have lots and lots of objects within the scene. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to replicate this object. Let's move it over here for, for a moment and we'll make a uh, green one as well. So I'll press Shift D and then I'll immediately press Y and I'm going to move it directly over here on the y-axis like that. I'm going to give it a new color. So this one being purple here, I'm actually going to go click back here for a second. Now this material is set as material.001. Well I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it purple color like that. And then this one I'm going to make a new, I'm going to give a new object here, so I mean a new color, so I'm going to add a new material with this plus button. Right, and then it says it's material color zero zero one, but I'm going to call it green color, like that. And then I'm going to go down here and turn it green, like that. All right, now so now we have green and purple, and this I'm going to give it a name and see automatically since it I derived it from this object, it turned it into purple object at zero zero one. But I'm going to call it green object, like this. All right, and we'll work with this object in the scene. We'll move this out of the way a little bit. All right, like this. And what we'll do is we'll create a simple little animation, and then once we've created the animation, then we'll go into the graph editor and we'll control it, and sh I'll show you some of the power of it. It's really, it's really cool. All right, so let's just, I'll get rid of this. Well, actually, I'll leave this window open for a second for a reason. So I'll go back to frame one, which I'm here. Remember, you can, the left and right arrow keys allow you to just move single frames at a time. Up and down allow you to change keyframes. So at frame one, with this object selected, I'm going to press the I key. I'm going to give it insert a location keyframe like that, and you can see it turns this yellow up here. So you could have actually gone here, hovered your mouse, and pressed I up here in one of these areas, and you could do the same thing, but in this case, let's go to frame 40 now, and I'll move the object up on the z-axis only, up here, and then I'll press I again and give it another location for keyframe, and then I'll go up to frame 80, like this, and I'll move it back down, and I'll actually move it all the way to zero, like this. I can type in, so, well, actually I don't want to move it to zero, oh, okay, forget that. I'll just move it to here. Let's actually, before I set the keyframe for that, let me step back to the first keyframe with the down arrow key and see what it was here. This was 0 0.71729. So, 71729. Okay. So, I'll put this up to 80, frame 80. 0. 0. 0.71729. I could have used a, just a whole number or something, but that was easy enough. And then I want to set a keyframe for that as well. All right, so I have three keyframes set. You can verify it with the up and down keys. They scroll between the frames like that. And then if I play it with Alt-A or with the play button like this, it runs up, runs back down. All right, so what if I wanted to continue? I just want the animation to continue on and on and on and on. All right, well, that's one thing we can do in the graph editor. So... Let's go into there. So I'll just get another window. These, this little triangular looking shape right there. If I l left click and hold it down and move it up here, I open up a new window. I'm going to move it up here about like this. And then up here in this window, I'll press N, get rid of that there so I can see the whole scene. And in here, 
if this is set to the 3D mode, see here's your 3D view, it looks like that little cube, but I want the graph editor, it looks like these curved lines like this. Alright, so what this does, this shows me uh, this object in the scene. Let me move this scene up. I uh, hold down the shift key in the middle scroll wheel and then I'm just moving the whole scene up like this. So what I have here is uh, basically notice here this I have a location keyframe set. So here's the green object and then right in here if I click this arrow it shows me the keyframes that are in here. So red of course you know but well by now is for the x-axis and green is for the y-axis and blue is for the z-axis alright so that's easy to remember and what we had set was a z keyframe and sure enough z is blue and so right in here you can see here's actually the action of the object on the z-axis like this right there at frame 40 in the graph editor it's up here and we can zoom in a little bit you can actually just whoops let me escape that I didn't want to do that let me control Z that there I want to shift I want to not shift but I want to take the uh, middle mouse button and just by holding the middle mouse button down I can move the whole window like this the middle wheel mouse and then by moving it scrolling the wheel mouse I can zoom in and out a little bit all right and so in here if I right click on that location there you can see that Z is active alright it's highlighted there I can click here and the green would be Y but there's nothing on Y it's just a flat line and then X is a flat line but blue here but I could have like I said you can just right click that dot right there and you've selected it as well and since it's selected you can use the same keys like in editing I can press the G key and just move this up and down like this alright so if I was at happen to be at frame let's let's move to frame 80 here in the or frame 40 here in this window and press G and then since I'm on frame 40 you can actually see the object moving in here because maybe I don't want it to go so high so I'll just set it right there alright and then when I run my animation see it just barely comes at the top of the screen here I'll press back over here and run alt at press alt a and you can see now I've actually changed the keyframe just by changing the graph editor in here the curve within the graph editing window All right, well that's one step that's really useful but the goal here was to make this go over and over again so I'm going to zoom out with the scroll wheel I'm going to zoom way back and now you can see how many more frames I'm looking at 0 to 250 frames like this and I'll move it over here to the side with the middle wheel mouse again and then down here to the F curve editor this is a powerful little tool is what we're going to be using but here in the key button like this key and you can add an F curve modifier now now this is a newer way compared to the older versions of Blender but when you add an F curve modifier we have all these options but we'll just use cycles you know like you know like uh, like the cycles of electricity that come you know 60 Hertz is a site is a cycle of 60 times per second but cycle what it does it replicates the keyframes across that way and I'm sure you know exactly what it's going to do right now is when I press alt a since this is set up to 250 frames here it just will continually run up and down and continue your animation. Alright, well hope that gives you a basic idea. A few other things you can do is you can grab these points here just like when you're editing a regular curve. I press G, I can actually change the curve like that. Well let's run that, let's see what happens there. So it changes the uh, dynamics of the curve. It's a pretty powerful tool. Alright, well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.